Why are we so attracted to lighthouses? Is it romance, mystery, sense of place? On Nantucket, there are three beacons. Brant Point is America's second oldest. Great Point is secluded at the northern tip of the island, and Sankety Head towers over the Sconset Bluff. There is an ongoing battle here to save the bluff from the perils of erosion. Erosion so dire that in 2007, Sankety Light was moved 405 feet to rescue it from falling into the sea. Sconset resident and photojournalist Rob Benchley documented the move. Today, he is keeper of the key. The stairway wiggles and it's supposed to. Okay. 65 stairs and two ladders bring you to the light. And then there's the view. Wow. This is a treat. Thank you, Rob. On a visit in 1852, Herman Melville wrote to Nathaniel Hawthorne, here in strange and beautiful contrast, we have the innocence of the land, placidly eyeing the malignity of the sea. I like to say in the off season, all Nantucketers spend the, spend the winter leaning against the wind, because mm. it really does blow. Benchley's family roots run deep in Sconset. As my father would say, the, uh, the uh, woods are full of us. His father Robert and his brother Nathaniel and nephew Peter and aunts and other uncles. So what's the attraction that has kept the Benchley family here for, for so long? It was a terrific place to come in the summer. You know, they rented and then they bought a house and this is back in the 40s. So they all had kids and the kids learned that little affliction called Nantucket. And I was coming here for one year and that was 1983. And what is it now? 2021. Mm -hmm. Here I am. When the time came to move the lighthouse, Benchley and his camera were ready. You had unfettered access when they were moving it, right? Yeah. The crew, International Chimney Corporation, told me that I could take all the pictures I wanted, but they said, you got to wear your hard hat and you got to stay out of our way. So I got involved with this wonderful experience of a community project that worked out rather well, I would say. This was Sankety's first light installed in 1850, a second order Fresnel lens that now resides in the Whaling Museum, home to the Nantucket Historical Association. Peggy Godwin is coordinator of visitor operations. It was lit with a one whale oil lamp. They could see it 18 to 20 miles away. Hmm. So the sailors referred to it as the blazing star because then they knew they were almost home. Oh. Whale oil was processed in candle factories such as this one, which is the original part of the museum. Oil brought home from journeys at sea was shoveled into burlap bags. So they, would they be lowering this as it was getting pressed? Yes. Think about how they press olive oil. Mm -hmm. They just keep lowering the bean mm -hmm. and squeezing the oil out. Gotcha. This is the only lever press left in the world. In the world. Right. So it's a very important artifact. <laughs> important also, this whale skeleton. That's a fabulous thing. This is a young adult sperm whale, 47 feet long. And unfortunately, it died on our beach. But we got permission to keep the skeleton and display it here because it really does tell the story of Nantucket. A story Hollywood told in the 2015 film, In the Heart of the Sea, based on the bestseller by author and island resident Nathaniel Philbrick. He told the true story of the Essex, which is a story we tell on a daily basis here in the museum. And it is a true story. It's a tragic story of the Essex being struck by a whale. The very story that inspired Melville's Moby Dick. The only remaining artifact from the Essex is a little piece of string and it was woven by one of the boat steerers whose name was Benjamin Lawrence. Every day he collected whatever fibers he could find and he wove it into this little string. And he said, if I ever get back to Nantucket alive, this will be a memento of a horrible ordeal. This is probably the smallest artifact in our museum, but I find it incredibly moving. And the Whaling Museum is far more than that, telling stories of Nantucket through time. The Nantucket Historical Association also owns 22 other properties people can visit. 
And Peggy Godwin dispelled a myth about so-called widow's walks so seen on so many houses. They were built not as lookouts for returning whaling ships as commonly thought, but for fire prevention. Chimney fires would be extinguished from the roof, so the correct term is roof walks. Up next, the real wings.